pledge allegiance to the flag of for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You want to announce so that yeah, people, people on video. Please announce that I couldn't stand up because I have a broken toe, and I don't know why they said, oh, she didn't stand up because, you know, disrespecting the flag. We don't want none of that. Okay? Oh, you have a broken toe? Yeah, That's she got a boot on her toe. That's how much you care about me, see? She didn't pay, so she got a boot. The dog, <laughs> the dog did it. <laughs> so. Okay, we have the statement of adequate notice. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided as follows. On January 10th and November 17, 2023, notice was sent out to the Home News Tribune, Star Ledger, Union County Local Source, TAP, INTO, and the Clerk of the Municipality. By state law, there is no smoking permitted inside this building at any time. In addition to the listed items in this agenda, this Board of Education may discuss and act upon other items not specifically referred to herein, as is allowed at the regularly scheduled monthly board meeting under the Sunshine Law. Roll call, please. Mrs. Fleming. Ms. Pino. Here. Ms. Rosada Quesada. Ms. Thomas. Present. Ms. Armstead. Ms. Carrillo. Ms. Cintron. Present. Mr. De La Cruz. Here. And Dr. Berghammer. Present. Please get the approval on that, right? Yeah. Okay, there's um, comments from the public. Members of the public desiring to make a public comment may come forward at this time. For those watching online, if you wish to make a comment or ask a question, please utilize the raise your hand feature on the online meeting platform. Please begin your comments by stating your name and address. Individuals are invited to speak on one topic at a time, and no individual will speak more than once until all individuals so, de so desiring have spoken once. The public is reminded that to ensure the efficient and orderly operations of the meeting, members of the public will be limited on speaking agenda items for three minutes. Anybody online? Superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. On Thursday evening, my superintendent's report will um, include um, our, our first introduction to our student advisory to the board. Um, the class president for the 12th graders, Azari Rainey, will be sitting on with us and I'll be introducing her to everyone. We'll also have a performance by the Fine Performing Arts Department. Our students will come here and, and sing and help us stay into the holiday spirit. Uh, our report on staff attendance patterns as well as our current vacancies. And I will also share out how our students are getting ready for college and the latest instant decision day and scholarships that have been offered thus far. And that will be my report on uh, Thursday. Thank you. The attorney report. Uh, yes, thank you. On Thursday, you'll all be voting on a memorandum of agreement with the LEA um, to settle uh, a potential grievance and disagreement regarding um, the pre-K kindergarten program we offer here. There was, there was some confusion about whether staff would be <coughs> permitted to enroll, um, enroll their, their non-resident children in our pre-K program at a vastly discounted rate of what the, the per pupil tuition would be. Um, the state law is pretty clear that we cannot offer that. Um, but again, because of a mix up in communication, there was um, an expectation um, by certain staff members that it would be available and they took certain actions in reliance on that expectation. Um, so we're entering into this agreement to reimburse those who did act in reliance on the expectation that they'd be able to enroll their non-resident uh, children in our pre-K program at a discounted rate. We're gonna, we're gonna reimburse them for deposit costs that they might have lost out on based on their, you know, their reliance uh, on that expectation. All right. Okay, thank you. This time the education report. Thank you. The Education Committee, upon recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Assistant Superintendents, present the following motions to the Linden Board of Education for approval. Resolutions number one through five on pages five through seven are seeking approval for special education services. 
Resolution number six on pages number seven and eight is seeking approval for amendments on past education reports. Resolution number seven on page eight is seeking approval for district field trips. Copies are in the hands of board members. Resolution number eight on page number eight is seeking approval for the use of facilities for various school events, which will be taking place, such as student assemblies, as well as parent workshops. Resolution number nine on page nine is seeking approval for the senior banquet for Linden High School students. Resolution number 10 on pages nine through 16 are to approve professional learning for district staff. Resolutions numbers 11 through 14 on pages 16 through 17 are seeking approval for various tutoring programming which will take place for our elementary school students. Resolution number 15 on page 17 is seeking approval for students to apply to participate in the inter-district choice program. Resolution number 16 on page 18 is seeking approval for curriculum writing for the multilingual learning department. Resolution number 17 on page 18 is seeking approval for our students who are enrolled in the Union County Vocational Program. Resolution number 18 on page 18 is seeking approval for revisions that were made to the middle school and high school student parent district handbook. Resolution number 19 on page 18 is regarding Consent 101, which is a program that teaches students about healthy boundaries. This program will take place during our health classes at both of our middle schools. Resolution number 20 on page 18 is to approve the writing, posting, and grading of lessons for the special education department. Resolution number 21 on page 18 is seeking approval to submit an application for school Y, school five to be a Title I school. Resolution number 22 on page 19 is seeking approval for the school district to provide ELA and math PD, which will take place for staff throughout the district where in-district staff will facilitate professional learning sessions for other staff members. Resolutions number 23 and 24 are regarding mentoring programs which will take place for high school students. Number 23 is called the Brothers Break Bread Initiative and number 24 is called the I Am Beautiful Initiative for our young male students and young female students. Resolution number 25 is for the school district to partner uh, with the county to provide in-district counseling services at no cost to the district. And resolution number 26 is seeking approval for various HIB investigations that uh, were investigated last month. That concludes the education report. Thank you. Uh, any questions? I have a question for number 19. Um, what does this, these workshops, the boundaries and harassment workshops for all eighth grade students in McManus and Seoul, what does that look like for them? So there's a curriculum that will be provided. The platform is called Consent 101, where students will essentially learn about healthy boundaries with their peers, how to have healthy and safe relationships, um, when someone makes you feel uncomfortable, how to speak up, how to advocate for yourself, how to identify a safe person and adult. Thank you. I have a question on number 18, the revision of the, the handbook, the student handbook. Uh, is that the, the prior uh, revision that there was on the handbook, or? There were, two, there were two revisions that were made. One revision was the addition of the yonder pouches that were added to the middle school as well as the high school, which will be launching soon. And then there was also a revision for the uh, middle school handbook, specifically the time allotment in which students are marked tardy to class. In one page, there was a discrepancy, so it was updated to reflect uh, 15 minutes. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Um, page 18. Um, all the, uh, number 20, the um, approval writing, posting, and grade lesson plans. What are we revising and what are, we, um, what are they doing? Number 20. 
Like Special one? education, mm -hmm. item 20. Number 20. Yes. That's the other Do you want to, you can respond to Okay. So, um, item 20, uh, for the writing and posting and grading, um, it's due to uh, the teacher shortage that we have for the special ed teachers. So just like the other items um, that this was approved for, the other subjects for mathematics, science, social studies, it basically allows teachers who are certified to be able to uh, write the lessons and post and grade the work for the students. So you say that teachers will be doing this? Yes. Teachers within the special education department. Yep. How many are we? Okay. Because we keep revising it, and I want to know why do we keep revising? I know you say you want the approval, but I want to know why we keep revising. I'm going to say if you make one mistake or zero or I or something, we have to revise it. So I want to know. Um, it's like approve the writing and posting. Didn't we approve it before, or is it different every time? So. Um, Right now we have substitutes in classrooms mm -hmm. and they are not writing the lesson plans. So we're, hire, we're paying the special education teachers to write the lesson plans to give to the substitute. The substitutes are not grading those lessons either. So the teacher is going to be doing that. So there's weekly lesson plans that have to go into the classroom. So that's what this item is about. So the teachers are doing it and the substitute is just implementing it in the classroom. Correct. And so we've been doing that with the teacher shortage for all subjects. Previously, we had it on here for math. We had it on here for language arts and now within the special education classrooms. I have a question about the teacher shortage. Are you done? I'm sorry. <laughs> so is that the same with number 16 as well on page 18, approve the writing for elementary? The curriculum, is that the same? No. No, so number 16 is a little bit different. The multilingual learning department is going to be writing uh, a curriculum for our all of our elementary students to ensure that the curriculum, it's cross-curricular. So all of our students will be receiving instruction that is aligned with our ELA curriculum, our math curriculum. It isn't going to be separate curriculums. Okay. So they're going to be collaborating to ensure that our curriculum meets state standards. Thank you. Okay, so since we have the, the teacher shortage with the special education, I know that um, we have a big program for that, uh, a large program, should I say. So how much, how many teacher shortages there would there be with the special education since the substitutes are teaching? I'll be reporting that out on Thursday. We're um, finalizing the data now, but that is in my report um, in regards to our teaching vacancies uh, for the entire district. Okay, thank you. I also have a question on number 20. What, what's, actually, what's the cost on number 20? I'm sorry, what is the? The cost. Because it says to be paid from the account, so. The cost, oh yeah, you mean, oh, it's going to be at the contractual rate, okay. so we need to update that. For number 10, um, if you could speak to the five-year strategic planning afternoon consultation workshop. Uh, it's uh, 14 and 13. It's That's the workshops for Mrs. Berkins and Ms. Lewis. So we are um, beginning to uh, formalize our strategic planning committee and crew. Um, the Union County Superintendent's Roundtable, I um, have collaborated with several superintendents. So we were invited to come to their school to see how they've implemented the plan. So Ms. Lewis and I are going to be going there um, to sit down and talk and, and look and see how they uh, created, established, and are um, ensuring that it is sustainable. So that's what that, um, that we call it a workshop, but it's, it's to go and to learn and grow more into that area. Um, and that is on the following day, I'll be meeting with district leaders um, to then execute what we've learned. And then from there on the December agenda, you'll see the, um, the dates for the remainder of the year of what that's gonna look like to bring in the community and 
delve into revising our strategic plan to be ready for July 2024 through July 2029. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I want to say something. Our last strategic plan um, that was created, I really wasn't very happy with the format of it. When I looked at the people that were involved in developing the plan, I saw a lot of names and I couldn't understand. A strategic plan, of course, is, 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 is a living thing that you have to change because it's one year, three year, five year. But, and I know that you have to put a committee together, a committee of staff, a committee of stakeholders. One of the things that I looked at our last plan and I was dissatisfied with is that we had a strategic plan. And our last strategic plan, there was no board member input. There was no board member input in our last strategic plan. The next, the other, our last strategic plan had no city input. It had a bunch of names. But I couldn't even understand. I can't understand a strategic plan, in my opinion, is a global plan with all, that all stakeholders must be involved in that plan. And I would hope that this plan that we are putting together, we <coughs> would have stakeholders involved. We would have city officials involved. We would have board members involved. And we will have key players involved because that's the only way you get a real, um, uh, I can't find the word. Can I say a holistic approach? Yeah, yes, 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 oh, yes. A holistic approach to the vision of, the, um, of our city because if, let's assume for example in the plan, we decided we want to build a new high school. I'm just throwing something out. Or we want to build a new building. It means that taxes could go up which means that every person who lived in, 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 in Linden could be affected. So I would like a real plan where we work together to, for the vision of our school district or city and parents and students alike. I even think we should have some students on it. We will. You know, students should be part of it because they are, in fact, their voices could be louder than our voices. Right, so this is just my, my thought. Um, Madam President, um, thank you for sharing your thinking, and that's exactly what it is going to look like. The Strategic Planning Committee, we will send out a survey to um, all of our stakeholders in the community, students, parents, the board members, uh, seeking your input of which committee you would like to be a part of. Within our strategic plan, we will have monthly meetings where we will come together and talk about each sector of our academics, uh, our fiscal um, finance, um, facilities, as well as uh, student achievement, behavior, everything that we expect our children, our community um, as a whole to carry out under the umbrella of education will be part of the strategic plan to take us into the next five years. So yes, uh, voices are going to be captured from anyone that says yes. And so we'll, we hope that, um, and again, um, next month, that plan, we will lay it out um, before the board for your approval of when we will be having those meetings and exactly what it will look like. So you're saying that we will have an outline. You will be preparing an outline as to what the plan would look like. Correct. And how you're going to be able to, how you'll be adding um, key, key community players to make sure this plan is for everyone. Correct, and I will say that um, the current plan that we do have up, um, w that was the same process that a survey did go out to stakeholders seeking um, input. What I believe what we have to make sure we do is uh, get people to say yes. Like this, the survey, the call out has to be meaningful to everyone. So um, we don't want to just have people just say they'll join, but then don't click the yes button. So we'll make sure that we do have representation from all sectors of our, our stakeholders to ensure that we can get a full representation of what we believe is a holistic view of 
Linden Public Schools District. Well, we could also invite people as well, as opposed to just doing a survey, we could also invite people because there is some, there are some voices that we, we, we need to know here, there, these certain voices. So some people, I, I would think that, you know, we could have a, a, a global survey, but we could also have some invitations of people we would like to be part of this strategic plan. You have any thoughts on that? What do you think, Malaysia? I think it works. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see the outline of it. Yeah, I, I can't wait to see the outline of it as well. Yes, and we, and we will do it in town hall meetings and go around throughout the district in evenings to ensure that people are, are able to come out and, and provide input. That's what we, we need, we will do. Yes. Another thing I, I wanted to ask you, if I may, Mr. President, yes, yes. Yes. I wanna ask, I saw you are going on two events, this leadership number 47 and 48. Are you getting some sort of award or something here? This one for 47 or 48, this is National Superintendent. Are you a presenter? What is it going on on 47 oh, and 48? <clears throat> yes, there are um, two different events that you'll see under professional development here. The first is um, district administration. Um, they are a national organization um, for superintendents. And I was nominated as one of the um, innovative women leaders of, of the year. Linden Public Schools is on the map. And so they invited me to come out to to be part of, um, they'll announce the winners there at that professional learning. During that time, they will also um, continue with training and development for superintendents, looking at global issues, as well as um, trends of artificial intelligence and just meeting the needs of all students. The second professional development you'll see on here, um, another organization reached out to me in regards, it's a superintendent forum of where do we see the state of education? And I was invited to showcase how we are in Linden, um, strengthening our partnerships and activating student voice as well as our learning walks. And so they asked me to come and speak on their platform as well to other superintendents around the nation. So, that is good. Okay. thank you. I'm excited to um, represent Lyndon. That's why we need a publicist because all these stuff. We need a word. Yes, that's on here. Okay. I have a question about the work sessions. Um, how do they? How do you choose the teachers that goes to those work sessions? Do they? Uh, say I want to go or you choose them, how, do, how, does, it, how does it work? Right, um, so professional development is part of every teacher's um, professional journey. They, um, in every school, um, administrators have a budget for professional development. And so we do in-house professional development or you can find workshops all throughout the state of New Jersey. Um, we receive professional learning brochures of, of how to um, upskill and grow in, um, in our craft. Um, like right now, the, the new state um, learning standards have changed, and so there's programming out there that um, is saying, you know, educators, come on in, we'll offer you a training to recap what's, what's there, or again, trends. And so your question asked, um, are we seeking them out to attend these trainings? Um, no, they're seeking it out, and we do have the budget to provide that um, development for them. And then also in the contract, it states that they come back and turnkey the information to everyone in the district so that it, it, it um, provides a collaborative understanding of what was learned. Hours of special of um, professional development that each teacher is acquired, required to have every year. Twenty hours. Just like we need to have it too. Mm -hmm. Professional Definitely. development. Mm -hmm. So if we are just board members mm -hmm. and we oh, have wasn't it. talking to me. I'm sorry. Yeah. I would imagine that um, the teachers. So all these programs that we are getting for the teachers is to help with their mandatory twenty hours of professional development. 
Okay. Yes. No, it's just that I see a name repeatedly, and I say, okay, do they ask to go or do they? Okay. Okay. Good to know. Well, I have a question. Um, we spoke about, I think, briefly, there's something about the yonder pouches. <laughs> I've heard the high school students have a petition going around, <laughs> and there's about 500 plus signatures on the petition because they're protesting against the pouches for January. Mm. I would like to know um, if you guys have heard about it, and if you have, how are we going to try to lessen the blow? Because I know sometimes when we make the decision and it's final, and now you're hearing on the other side of the court that they're not happy. And if we make the decision without trying to sit down and collaborate together, it's going to be, I think there's going to be more friction. So there is a petition going around. They have 500 plus signatures already. Okay. If you haven't heard of it, I'm trying to get my hands on it to no avail, but I believe I could get my hands on it, okay? And we don't want to get anybody in trouble because I'm a firm believer the students have the right to speak up in a respectful manner, and if they're doing it respectfully, which the petition for me is respectful, okay, we got to listen to them. What are their concerns about? So I would like to know what we're going to do to try to sit down with them and listen to them and see if we could come up with something that would ease the masses. You know, I have some friends that go to um, the teach in some of the private schools and even some of the um, schools in, in different cities. And the, the rule is, when the students come to school, they have to put the cell phones in their lockers. The cell phones are not even allowed on them. They have to put the cell phones in their lockers. So reality is, if you don't want the yonder pocket, then put your cell phone in the locker. There's a lot of things that we have going on that I even disagree with our governor that he put into law to teach in schools. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we have to eat it, unfortunately, because he didn't give us no options either. So I believe we have options. This is a different day and age. Okay, phones have come into big, a big play in our lives. Unfortunately, especially this day and age for these students, because they have a different mindset as opposed to what we had when we were growing up. Let me ask you a question. How many people on a job, like if you have a job and you're working on your job, how many of us on the job could be making personal calls and using our cell phones? It happens every day in my job. Well, maybe in, in certain jobs you can, in certain jobs you can't. Mm -hmm. If you go into a hospital where there are doctors and nurses and stuff like that, they don't use their cell phone. Could you imagine you have a classroom where a teacher is teaching, their phone ring and they pick up the phone and call while the class is going on. Bottom line is, we are an education facility. And we are teaching our students to become globally responsible adults. Cell phones, I agree, is important. When I was growing up and there was not a cell phone in the classroom and my mother wanted to call me, they will call the administrative office and the administrative office will get me and I would be handled. All of us have been exposed to that same way when our parents wanted us. They called the administrative building. The <coughs> administrative building reached out to us and we were, we were with our parents. Listen, our students will not die for six hours if they, the phone is placed safely away so that they could focus on their education. We are preparing our children to compete in the real world. We need to give them all the education they can. Listen, I understand cell phone is important. My cell phone got lost in, 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 in Walmart about a month ago. Oh Lord, I almost got a heart attack. <laughs> you know, because my phone lost. But on the other hand is that I know the value of the cell phone, but our students could survive without them for seven hours. This I, is my... I can... Um, I, oh, sorry. Um, before we got these pouches, was there a survey that went around to the parents about the, the pouches? 
Did we request? No? Okay. I don't think so. I no? Didn't so you didn't get one. You didn't get one. You didn't get one. Okay. My thing is we give our kids freedom of speech. Absolutely. We do not want to take that away from them because they are individuals. They have, they have personalities, most definitely. But until we get this stuff, this information in front of us, then we can handle it. Because right now it's just hearsay. You just hear it. You just see it or whatever. It's there saying stuff to you. But when we get the information in front of us, then we can take care. Because I've been hearing stuff too about they don't want the pouches. They don't want this. They don't want that. We want a lot of stuff, but we don't get it. So we can talk to them and find out what they want. Because see, putting it in the locker, it's not a good idea for the simple fact is, I go to my locker every 15 to 20 minutes, I gotta go to the bathroom, let me go to the locker. You see what I'm saying? So therefore, um, consequences, they must uh, deal with consequences, okay? You put your stuff in this pouch, leave it in there. If not, what do you want us to do? We want you guys to be safe, absolutely. Then I hear that, oh, if there was something to happen, we can't get a hold of it. You said call the office. The phone's going to be ringing off the hook. So therefore, we have to do something to fix it so therefore we can fix it for our children and we can fix it for the parents because the parents is, uh, is not at ease as neither. I hear the parents don't like it. The parents don't do this. The parents don't want this. So what can we do? We have to find out what do they want. But... We have to make sure that they're sitting down, they're learning, and not on their phones. Because that's the most, they're on their phones constantly. They're on their phones constantly. And if you say put it in your bag, they're not going to do that. You know that. Because everybody got their phone sitting on the table right now. So everybody's checking their phone. So therefore, we have to let them know that we understand you, we hear you, but hear what we have to say to you about these phones. That's it. So when we get the paper in front of us, then we can take care of it and see what we're going to do about it and then have the parents in here say what they want us to do about it. But we already spent money on these pouches, didn't we? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't we spend money on these pouches? These pouches is not cheap? Mm -hmm. Okay. So therefore, we have to make a solution about it, you know? Sam, are yeah. you saying, like, are we open to negotiate, like, for example, the students that came here, the football players that were upset, the band members that were upset, the, the night games being changed to Saturday mornings? So are we giving these kids a voice? Are we able to negotiate? Is that what you're asking? Uh, only because I would like to hear what their points are. Because if there's a petition the truth, with 500 signatures, obviously they're not. And they're, they're there are some students to. that may have a hard time, and I'll say, writing notes. Now, they might have their phone to take pictures of the notes because that's how they work better. Okay? Guilty. Actually, so, I've done this before. So, yeah. there are other things. I'm sure there's valid points and I'm sure there's invalid points. Okay? But if you have 500 signatures in a short amount of time, that's concerning. Okay? And once again, when we make a decision, we're moving forward. And this is in the work life now that I have also. There are things in my job that I don't agree, but they don't listen. Mm -hmm. And when they don't listen, that's when you start having more negativity and you start having more people rebel against stuff. If we listen and we try to work something out, it might be a decision they might not want. Unfortunately, they didn't ask the parents, what do you feel about yonder pouches? No. What if I'm a parent that says, I disagree with those pouches? I the, the my parents didn't have a voice on okay, this either. So there. No. Now, they, our administration made that decision without asking. How do we feel? I now, agree our with students that. are starting to stand up for, their, for themselves. Okay? I believe we have to listen also. It does take a village. Okay, it does take a village. And if we're building it, I want to hear Ms. Perkins because I know she's been <laughs> wanting to say something on it, if I'm correct. No? I think we need, okay. to, I, I think we need to be very careful. Um, about what we're discussing. I agree. Um, in regard to that, um, there's a lot going on and there's gonna be a lot of things that everyone doesn't agree on. So I think we should definitely yeah. save this uh, conversation yeah, we could, yeah. we because we need to tread very lightly on that. And um, yeah. I, I agree with that. Because, you know, I, Mrs. Perkins want to say something? Yes, um, I'll, I would like to answer the question. Um, the first question was, was I aware that there was is a petition? I had one student reach out to me over the uh, Thanksgiving break and did ask for more information and stated that there was a petition. And also, if us, you know, um, students may attend the board meeting on Thursday. 
Um, I responded to the student, um, A, thankful for reaching out and sharing that information. I brought in Mr. Kuntz into the email as well to gather more information because as the building principal, he could speak to the student in regards to additional questions um, for the yonder pouches. Mr. Kuntz responded back to the student and I. Um, the informational session for the students is actually tomorrow. So they are having assemblies on the yonder pouches and the purpose for it um, in regards to student engagement. From there, um, town hall meetings will be taking place, so parents will be invited to that the first week of December. Um, and there's also going to be student discussions in the classrooms to further gauge more information. Um, this one particular student, again, was invited to, we can continue the conversation, so I am waiting for a response on that. So yes, we, anyone, if they have a question or an opportunity, we'll give them the opportunity to um, elaborate on their questions. I'm glad that they have the opportunity to express themselves and, and understand why, why yes or why not. <laughs> As a parent, it's a concern because of security, and I, have, I know that we don't have those kind of things in our town, and hopefully never happens, but tragedies that have happened in other towns, and you know, shootings and all this stuff at schools, they have found the kids because of the cell phones. They were calling, and they were checking where were that line coming from, you know, from which room, because they were calling from the phone. So, uh, it's, it's those type of things as a parent that we worry about, like if something happens, how they're going to be able to contact us or contact the police. Or it, I think it's just, it's just that, but if we explain the kids um, also why it's, it's necessary, because a lot of kids, they don't listen. I know, I know that a kid um, in another town punch a teacher because took the phone away from it and punched it in the face and, you know, it, 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 those kind of things that, like, uh, it has to be controlled in, in some ways or another. So I'm glad, I'm glad that, that we, we are at least um, given them the opportunity to express themselves and to listen to, you know, to you guys, why are we doing this, why it has to be done. Well, I'm proud of our students. I expect them to respond the way they do mm -hmm. because it's phones and they love their phones. But we are the adults in the room and at the end of the day, this is the most crucial time of the students' lives, mm -hmm. preparing for college, getting them ready for college, getting them reducing their distraction so that they could be properly prepared to compete in the real world. Sacrifices have to be made in order for our students to succeed. And this may be one of the sacrifices that need to be made so our students will be properly prepared to, to enter the global world. Any other questions so we can move on? No? Thank you. Next, Finance Committee. Good evening. On uh, Thursday night, the Finance Committee, upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools and the Business Administrator, will be presenting the following motions for approval. Uh, resolutions one through five are our monthly um, typical approvals, including Board Secretary and Treasurer's reports, approval of payments of salaries, and payments of uh, uh, bills, transfers, as well as approving the student activities report. Resolution number six is amending two prior resolutions. Um, uh, a resolution from 928 uh, in regards to registered nurses um, based on the needs of the district. Um, the cost was increased um, to $70 an hour um, for weekdays for the registered nurses and um, we're also looking at adding one-to-one -one nurse aides for $35 an hour. Um, for October 19th, uh, the quote that we had received was for a refrigerator. Um, it was, uh, we needed a walk-in box freezer, which is a little bit more money, which is the reason for the adjustment to the resolution. Resolution seven through 12 are, uh, donations. Uh, resolution 7 is a $400 uh, donation that we've received now every month from the Blackboard Giving Fund. 
Uh, resolution number eight is um, with the grand opening of Wawa in Linden, New Jersey. There was a donation of $1,000 from Wawa, uh, 500 of it going to the band and $500 of it going towards the athletic program. Um, resolution number nine, it's actually not a donation, but it's accepting funds in the amount of $5,125. Uh, that's for the sale of obsolete technology items. Resolution number 10 is uh, accepting funds of $19,048. This is from our school, New Jersey School Insurance Group. This was a safety grant that we applied for during the 22-23 uh, school year um, for uh, security upgrades that were done, um, I believe it was at school six. Uh, resolution number 11 is a New Jersey high impact tutoring competitive grant that we received in the amount of $384,000. Uh, this is uh, grant money that will be utilized for grades three, four, and five uh, for t after school tutoring. Um, so I wanna thank the team that, that you know, did the grant for that. Uh, resolution number 12 is donations from Turtle and Hughes. This is a former, uh, a company that was in Linden, New Jersey. They were moving, uh, I believe, to Clark, and they had um, equip. They had, you know, um, uh, furniture that they said, you know, they weren't taking with them, so they donated it um, to the Linden Board of Education. Resolution 13 is approving a contract with uh, BCBA um, for our autistic program. Resolution 14 is approving the submission of our DRTRS, uh, similar to how we have a student count on October 13th. We also have uh, an assessment done of our students that are transported as of October 13th. Uh, and this is approving the submission of that report to uh, the Union County Superintendent of Schools. Resolution 15 is um, opening up a, uh, another avenue for additional funds for the school district. Um, the New Jersey Cash Management Fund, the best way I can kind of explain it is it's sort of like a CD um, where we can get a better interest rate. Um, so we're looking at approving them as a legal depository for the Linden Board of Education um, to perhaps get better interest rates. We're obviously gonna go back to our banks um, once we have the interest rates from the cash management fund to see if the, the banks that we're currently using can perhaps get us a little better, better rate. Resolution 16 is the submission of the fiscal year 24, which is gonna cover 24-25 for our preschool program. Um, for the 24-25 school year, we're anticipating, I believe, an increase of preschool enrollment of about 125 students. Resolution 17 is the submission of carryover monies um, from the 23-24, um, uh, or rather from the 22-23 school year into the 23-24 ESSA application. Uh, these were monies that were unspent at the end of the 22-23 um, uh, cycle. Um, you'll see that there's some areas that uh, some of the grants have significant funds within them. Um, just a quick overview, you know, Title I monies um, is not a lump sum, it's allocated by school. Um, so we are looking at meeting with the principal to discuss how they want to spend the money, uh, but it, it needs to align with many of the current goals we have with the schools, which includes things like tutoring, summer schools, and family programs, and that applies to both the Title I-A and the I-A SIA. Uh, Title II-A, uh, we're really, um, can be utilized for professional development, so we're gonna be really looking at bulking up our PD. Uh, Title III is um, for our ESL program. Uh, Title IV is for our SE, we're gonna be looking at SEL technology, after school, STEM, and Unity Day expenditures for that. Um, we're scheduling meetings actually this week and next week, actually this week mostly, um, to, uh, for the budgeting of that uh, carryover amounts. Resolution 18 is approving the upgrade of internet access um, with Crown Castle. Um, this is uh, you know, increasing by $100 a month, but it's going to be doubling our uh, capability of the gigabytes. Um, and this is really a secondary, um, uh, really a backup that we have for our internet service um, so in the case that our, our, uh, our main line goes down. 
Next page, resolution 19. Um, we had put money away, or not away, but we had put money uh, within the budget for 23-24 uh, for Promethean boards um, we, for the middle schools. When we had spoken um, with the two middle school principals, there was um, an expression that there was a lot of classrooms that lack Promethean boards. Um, so we're looking at really bulking it up to the fact to having every classroom having a Promethean board. So uh, I believe it's 20 going into uh, Seoul and 15 in McManus, but don't quote me on that just yet. I, I don't, <laughs> the number's off the top of my head. Uh, resolution number 20 is approving the purchase of three spot vision and one OAE device for the district's nursing department. Uh, this came as a request from our head nurse. Uh, the spot vision and AOE devices are needed to perform the required New Jersey State vision and hearing requirements for all students. Um, the equipment that they are using is outdated and this is to update um, that equipment. Resolution number 21, um, again continuing with um, what I, I believe the board is looking to do. Um, we had a meeting with the uh, vendor that was doing the, um, uh, which, we, well, yeah, at first we had a meeting with the principal in regards to um, some of the requests for playgrounds equipment for school number two. Uh, and speaking with the vendor who was putting in the rubber mulch, he suggested that, you know, it's really ideal to do the playground equipment at the same time as a rubber mulch. And looking at our budget, we had the uh, funds to, um, to provide an, in the install of the playground equipment. So we're looking um, for the board to approve that installation. Um, most likely, you know, the, the work would get done over the summer um, simply because of the lead time for some of the equipment and, and, and the rubber mulch. Uh, resolution number 22 is approving a visitor management system. Um, we had, um, um, piloted one at school number nine to see how it was running. Um, there was, um, it's, it ran very well. So it's gonna be a, a system that um, basically computerizes our, our, our um, visitor management. Currently right now people come in and just sign in. Uh, this is going to be um, allowing for uh, background checks to be run um, by a, a barcode reader of people's IDs. Uh, pictures will be taken um, of the uh, visitors to our uh, facilities um, with name with uh, visitor passes being printed out and affixed to uh, their clothing. Um, and uh, you know, keeping a record of who's in the building, um, a computerized record, um, so that in the need in in the need that we would, uh, rather in the case that we wouldn't need that information, we would have it um, at our fingertips. Resolution 23 is to approve a proposal from board docs to provide document management services for our board agendas. Uh, this uh, came in part, we, well, it's really, uh, there's a couple of things that are uh, the reason why we're, we're suggesting that the district go with uh, a board doc solution. Uh, number one, this would allow, if the board so chose in the future, to go with online um, board agendas. Uh, they could do that. The agendas still can and will be printed out. I brought copies of, of the agendas from another district so that everyone can see. It's a slightly different format, but it's all the same information. Um, but what we liked about the board docs on our end, it's going to make our Secretary's jobs a little bit easier. Um, you know, we're currently utilizing Microsoft Word to update everything. Um, we've had an, we had an incident one time where somebody saved something the wrong way, and it sort of almost erased everything. You know, there was a panic a couple of hours before technology was able to find an older version. Uh, this is also when we do save the board, uh, when we do the minutes, uh, this will allow for the district to actually, or, or, or people, and really anybody, to go onto our website and search prior um, agendas for anything, you know, whether it's a resolution, um, who presented, you know, anything like that. Anything that's in our minutes right now would be able to be searched. Um, whereas right now you have to go into the individual um, agendas to find the information that we're looking for. Um, so we can, you know, certainly discuss that further. And, and I, like I said, I have copies of the agendas um, 
for the board to, to review. Resolution number 24 is to um, provide Dora floor over the concrete outside of school number nine. This is for a play area for a student at school number nine. Um, resolution 25 is a um, approving a contract with home care therapy. Um, this is to provide additional nursing staff. It's really just allowing us to um, contract out with a different vendor. While we do have a dollar amount on there, um, we, we haven't actually um, you know, been provided with any nurses just yet, but this is just somebody in case we do have a need for nursing staff, whether it is for uh, substitute nursing or to provide uh, supplemental nursing um, from everything from transportation to you know, providing if somebody uh, nurses out um, for an extended period of time. Uh, resolution number 26 is approving a joint transportation agreement with the Central Regional District for the 23-24 school year. Uh, this is for two students that um, reside out of district um, per the regulations of the state as it uh, applies to homeless students. These students have the option of attending school at their last uh, permanent residence, which is the Linden Board of Education. Uh, so the students have chosen to um, attend school here. Uh, the financial responsibility uh, follows um, that the last known uh, residence, permanent residence, is responsible for the finances of that student. So because a student is choosing to attend school here, the students are choosing to attend school here, we're responsible for transporting the students. Resolution 27 is for uh, surplus equipment uh, to be disposed of per, per board policy. Resolutions 28 and 29 are for uh, approve, uh, looking to authorize for RFPs for the business office. Uh, 28 is uh, for real estate services um, to, um, if the district so chose, uh, to go with perhaps purchasing land, uh, purchasing property or purchasing um, a building. Um, we would need to have a real estate agent in, in, uh, for that. 29 is for remedial action services for an underground storage tank located at school number two. Uh, the district is required to remove an underground storage tank and provide remediation uh, for that, so we are going out for an RFP for those services. Resolution 30 and 31 um, are for the unit vent re replacement as well as uh, rooftop unit um, which is for our heating and, and cooling for school eight and school nine. Um, this is uh, something that's required for us to approve, uh, to be submitted down to the state of New Jersey um, for our ROD grants. Resolution 32 is to uh, approve the Board of Ed to join the Garden State Coalition of Schools. Um, and uh, the superintendent can provide more information on that if the board has questions. Resolution 33 is approving, it's a revised agreement with the, uh, the town in regards to the memorandum of agreement. Um, we had previously approved this, however there were so many changes that we needed to make uh, in regards to this agreement that we decided to just do a new resolution for it. Uh, resolution 34 on page 40 is uh, we had gone out to bid. Um, we had previously approved uh, temporary contracts for two routes for um, school number nine as well as for our LMED route. Uh, these uh, we went out to bid on November 16th uh, and these were uh, the, the bids that were received um, and the lowest responsible bids. Um, this is a new company that we are, will be working with for the remainder of the 23-24 school year. And finally, uh, 35, and this is a change uh, based on discussions we've had with the attorney. Uh, this is for the unit vent replacement at school number four. Um, to, it's gonna be awarded to Hannah's mechanical contractors. Uh, this is being paid for out of the uh, ESSER three grant. Uh, so that's it in regards to the resolutions. Before I get to the board questions, just to let everyone know, at our next board meeting, um, we're going to be having the demographic, not the November one, but the December one, the demographic study, which has been emailed out to the Board of Education. The demographer will be uh, live and in person here presenting um, the results of that demographic study. So uh, if you haven't had a chance to go through it, please do. Um, 
We're fingers crossed that we, we might have the audit also done by the next board meeting, although um, you know, we're, we're still working with them in regards to it. The, you know, 99% of it is, is actually complete. We just have a few loose ends that need to get taken care of. Um, we met with the architect today in regards to the HVAC projects for 8, 9, and 10, so we're moving along with uh, those items. Uh, in regards to the roof bid, that's also uh, moving along. Um, roof bid uh, for the district for several uh, buildings, as well as um, the HVAC project for roof eight, and HVAC for school eight uh, is due to be opened in uh, mid-January. Uh, the bathroom project, I've emailed the Board of Education in regards to that, that project is coming along. Uh, I don't believe we will be able to have our board meeting at school one in December, but we're very confident that uh, for the organizational meeting in January, we'll be back there. And the school six windows project, um, the bid is being put together as we speak. And that is the end of my report. Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> That was a lot. Yes. I have a question. Um, I have, um, oh, go ahead. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I do have a question on page 34, right? Um, it says amending the cost of the registered nurses, right? Yes. Seventy dollars an hour. Um, how many nurses do we have, and um, do we need more nurses? Well, this is, again, this is, uh, we don't actually, we haven't been utilizing this vendor. Okay. This is just, a lot, you know, it's simple, similar to how we have the substitute service mm -hmm. um, with uh, Delta T. This is just a, another vendor that we could potentially utilize in the, in the case that we have a need for nurses. Um, you know, we do have uh, some students that do, might need a one-to-one -one nurse. That, that's what prompted us to start looking at outside um, you know, in, in the conversations that we've had um, with the head nurse, that there is concerns about uh, some of the work that needs to get done for the students. Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, I have a question about uh, number 13. Can you elaborate more on that? I'm not understanding that. That? 13 on yes. page 35. Um, well, this is a uh, BCBA, which is a behaviorist. Um, uh, typically, I think for the aut uh, autistic program, um, you need to have uh, evaluations done. Um, I can speak kind of about this. I'm sure. Can you? Yes, it's essentially it's essentially a behaviorist for some of our special education students who would be providing services such as evaluations or providing support to teachers regarding the behavioral needs of our autistic students or students in our autistic programs. Okay, thank you. And um, for answering that. And also number 21, I'm happy to see that because um, I saw the poor condition in the playground area of school number two um, when I attended the Spooky Harvest event in October and also um, the Halloween parade. Uh, yeah, and it's going to be two, um, two small playgrounds, one for the pre -K or three through five on the one side, right. and then the, um, the rest of the building will have, uh, you know, the six through so 11 or 12 will have a playground on their end. Okay, happy to hear that. Um, also number 26. Yes. So it's, it would be 500, let me uh, let's see if I understand this, $518 a day for that student because of the transportation, is that correct? Yes. Well, they're, they're coming up from Bayville, New Jersey. I don't even know where that is, but okay. Uh, I don't know how far that's it down is. south. That's very far south. Mm -hmm. For two students? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so I'll, I'll try to give you a brief overview. The, the federal government um, has come up with uh, what's called, you know, how you take care of home, uh, homeless students. And homeless students doesn't mean that somebody's living on the street. It means they don't have a permanent residence. So it can be that, um, you know, uh, if there was a fire at their house and they move in with relatives. I mean, that's, what typically it is, is is that students are moving in with relatives somewhere. Um, so it's not really that they're homeless, but they don't have a permanent home. The state, uh, the federal government has basically said, listen, this is very traumatic for the students. Um, so in these instances, we're going to leave it up to them as to what's the best, you know, what, what's best for them, where would they like to go to school, you know, and, and their thinking is it should be, you know, they might want to go back to their old previous school. 
The way that the, the law works is that for the first year, wherever the student is residing, the financial responsibility is on them. After the first year, it transfers back to the, the district of residence. Um, so, you know, we and you know, Annabelle and I have talked about, you know, the, the homeless students. We, you know, I'll, I'll ask her if we have any students that we can, you know, potentially collect tuition from. You know, if we have any. Uh, students that are from out of state or out of country um, because there is also the ability for us to collect tuition on them um, from the state of New Jersey. However, in, in this instant, um, it's been determined, you know, the student wants to come back, which is in a sense a good thing, but, you know, costing us money. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for elaborating. Thank you. For number 11 on page 35, the funds, will this be distributed to all of the elementary schools, all third, fourth, and fifth graders? We're, uh, I'm sorry, you said 17? No, number 11 on page oh. 35. Uh, I believe it is going to all the elementaries. Paul was the one who really spearheaded the, uh, the grant, so he could speak to it a little so, bit. So, yeah, the committee um, <clears throat> that put together this grant did um, divide the money to all the elementary schools for grades three, four, and five. So as soon as it gets approved from the state and everything there, there's revisions to it, we'll be able to uh, start disseminating the funds. Do we know um, when it would get approved outside of us accepting it on this proposal? Do we know when it'll have state approval? I'm just wondering when it will start. If it's the 2023-2024 school year, we have January through basically May, mid-June. Um, and would these funds roll over until the following school year? Do we know that? No, it won't roll over, but they can roll over into the summer. So into the summer school programs, um, it could roll over into that. Do we know how many uh, tutors we have at each elementary school? About how many? Uh, for the program, uh, depending on um, the school size, it was determined based on school size. So some schools that have higher enrollment will end up getting probably like six um, or eight teachers. And then the lower schools will get about four teachers. Um, it was done by that. And then there's also coordinators that will coordinate uh, at each school. Have we identified those individuals at each school? No, no, because we were waiting on all of this funding, so then it could be on the next agenda after it's all done, then, you know, we have to advertise for all the positions and, and then the uh, approve all all the hand people. Hand. It seems like that is going to take a lot of time for it to kick into gear for the remainder of the school year. I'd be interested to see that list. Um, one of the things with this grant is, is that we just received the broadcast from the state of New Jersey um, in the beginning of October mm -hmm. and stated that we had to apply. So we are very thankful that we applied and received it. So now these are just all the procedural steps. We were just informed about this 10 days ago um, that they did accept our application of applying. So um, I, I understand the timelines are, are the timelines based on just finding out we've been awarded. They are asking for a few revisions to our application of which we're making, have made. So hopefully, um, you know, once we get the go ahead that it's all complete, then the next phase is to publicize and then seek the teachers. I know it's for after school. Um, by any chance, would tutoring be offered on um, Saturdays under this particular grant? That I don't believe you put Saturdays no, in there. No, it was it was for virtual and for uh, in person. Okay. Thank you. Virtual. For virtual. Virtual and in person. Third, fourth, and fifth grade. I have one more question. Sorry. Um, Page 37, number 29, the storage tank. Is this um, an oil tank? Yes. I mean, it's been abandoned, um, but there was monitoring that was done of the tank, and it's, uh, there's still remediation that needs to be done for it. Right. Uh, can it be removed? Uh, 
I'd have to double check on, on what's in the RFP, so I'll, I'll get that back to you. Moved. Thank Oops, you. Yeah. Those are all of my questions. Thank you. Um, yeah. I have a couple questions. One of the questions I have is number 23. Sam, you'd be very happy that we're getting rid of paper. So my suggestion for the number 23, seeing that we're getting rid of paper agendas, maybe um, either from next month or from January, we all should start bringing our laptops. Because, you know, the district gave us a laptop for this purpose so that we could, you know, be able to move around. So if we are getting rid of agendas and everybody bring their laptops, then laptops there is no need for greatest. agendas if we utilize the laptops. Them laptops are not the greatest, but okay. They are not the greatest. <laughs> it they may be a stuck. distraction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they get stuck, you got to push it around. They are not the greatest. But then I have to, to get them changed. My suggestion to... is, my suggestion is, seeing that we are going to laptops maybe starting from January, we all need to bring our laptops back in, have them checked, make sure they are working properly. So starting from January, we will be using our laptops for meetings. What do you guys think? They, they're not going to be on yonder punches, right? Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? What do you say? Yonder punches. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, trees. Yes. Yes. Less trees. You don't think the laptops would be a distraction? Well, the, the thing is, though, Sam kept talking all the time. He don't want paper. He don't want paper. He don't want paper. <laughs> we don't so, have paper. Uh, mail, we think huh? we've yeah, been doing we good without it. Somebody was listening. <laughs> no I like to take no. my notes. Huh? I like, I like to take time. my notes Well, you can still take your notes. It's just that... Um, I just need, need okay. If, no, you finish? No, I was. You, you, okay, you go ahead. Could, go, I'm no, sorry. You go can ahead. say something. No, no, no. Like, I was talking about something else. You go right ahead. Yes. And what if we forget our laptop? Hmm? <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> different scenarios. What, okay. what if we forget? We'll, most we'll likely it'll be me. What if we forget our laptop and then we can't look on each other's paper? Put that right? one on the burner. Put that one on the burner. You would still need to have paper agendas because the audience is the audience. So we will still have some paper agendas, but I just think. I think for us. Really, too. you're just saving nine. Environmental. Packets. Environmental conscious. Ah. Well, but then all the backup too. I yeah. recycle. <laughs> that particular software. So I think it's um, more for the betterment of the administration versus um, us not us bringing our laptops. So yeah, and it's you know again, and and I don't because I get you know very nervous about saying that you know you don't have to you we're not going to have paper because I know a lot of people like having the paper. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we will still have it for the board. But it's also and it'll help. Uh, I mean, I, I think. It will also be a benefit in regards to if we're updating the agenda rather than you having to wait till getting here the night of the meeting. Um, and to your point to, for the distractions, I think the football will be over so we don't have to worry about closing <laughs> the games. <laughs> okay. mm -hmm. Which nobody would check on, but you know. <laughs> Another another agenda item. Could you again explain to the board agenda item number 15, please? 15? Yeah, so uh, the state of New Jersey has a cash management fund, um, which basically is uh, a legal depository. So it's really somewhere else. And I won't say it's an investment per se, but it's, it will get better interest rates typically than what we're getting at our um, local banks. So we wanted to have this as an avenue of for the potential um, deposit because we do have um, and when we get through the audit, we should have significant monies within some of our reserve accounts, which is monies that we're not going to be touching during the you know, remainder of the 23-24 school year because we haven't designated it um, to be budgeted for. So, um, like I said, it's it's the best way I, th I always think of it is like a six-month CD. You know, we, you you put the money into the CD. Um, and not, and I'm not saying that we can't get the money out, but you know, you typically leave the money in there, um, and you get a better interest rate than you are getting within your you know your checking account. Your, your savings account. So, um, you know, we're always looking at, 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 you know, really, you know, reducing costs and getting revenues for the or most revenue or most bang for the buck. So we said, look, you know, this might be a, a good avenue, especially, like I said, since we are sitting, we will be sitting on some significant funds um, once we get through with the audit, you'll see. I think it's a great idea. Number um, 22. Page 36. Yes. Okay. 
who's going to be doing this, who's going to be training for this, and how it's going to work. So the, um, we currently have um, uh, personnel that do um, check people in at each of the, uh, at each of the schools. Um, so we would, get, we would receive training from the vendor um, for, those, for that personnel. Um, but it's, it's, you know, as of right now, somebody's coming in and you have to sign in. So the, the way that the solution, this program works is that instead of signing in, if you have an ID, you give them your ID, uh, they will um, basically run it through a barcode reader and it's going to uh, do a background check in regards to Megan's Law, which is actually public information. Anyone can go on the website right now and, and, and look up Megan's Law uh, offenders. Uh, but it's also going to um, you know, print out a, uh, basically a, a, a tag to say, a picture ID to say, hey, you know, if you have an ID. Now we're also cognizant of the fact that there's gonna be people who don't have IDs with them. Um, we can do the searches based on um, uh, uh, date of birth, um, but the, we also have the webcam to take the picture. So it, it's really, again, it's sort of a level of security for our uh, uh, schools to sort of say, hey, listen, we know who's in the building. Um, you know, obviously we have cameras and things like that, but it's just, you know, sort of a deterrent to say, hey, listen, you know, we're, we're recording that you're here. And, and we're, we're, you know, we're fighting. We did roll it out at School 9. It, it seemed to work very well we over there. We can get School 9 then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How long has it been at School 9? We rolled it, I think it was for a month or so. And it's working fine. Oh, yeah. Well, I was one of the first ones to go through there for that day. Did that, find that they did put it, it find in. Anything? I was, did no, they find didn't find anything because oh. they let me in. <laughs> but I do have a question on that because it is a good idea. However, <laughs> in School 9, this is what my concern is. School nine, so they're already inside the building and they're getting that little background check. God forbid something comes back negative. They already have access to the building. Yeah, well it's only, again, and I'm not trying to dismiss it, it would only just be, you know, it's not gonna show us violent criminals or anything like okay. that. It, and we're not, because we're not allowed to access that information. Um, you know, I, I've seen systems where that, that information can be accessed, but we're not able to access it. You actually have to send it off to the police department who is a dispatcher who's actually going to check it, and they really don't want us to, you know. Which is understandable, yeah. but I still think, regardless, I'm already inside the building. Yes. And I'm, so it's not like school six that you still have that window. Before they get access to inside, mm -hmm. they only have access to that little vestibule. So they're not gonna be given the access to go in. School nine, I already had the access inside the building. So there was not a vestibule that we did it before. So we had the second line of security before. So I'm thinking if, even if they had something bad to do, yeah. it, it's a little concerning if they're already inside. Well, we can, yeah, we could certainly look at, I mean, I've seen it with the, uh, with like, you know, the man traps that we have where you can have a little slot cut into the window so that they can slide their IDs yeah. through. Um, so we can look at, at, at doing something uh, with that. Okay, so anybody had a, because I have another question also. No, that's good. <laughs> okay, uh, number eight. Okay, um, thank you, Wawa, for coming to Linden and giving that little deposit. But to the athletic program, is it, I know it's, not that big of a deal, but can we use it towards the Special Olympics? Because the Special Olympics, we were looking to raise some funds in there, obviously, once we started up, because it's small. So can that money go to the Special Olympics or no? Uh, I'd have to double check, because I think no. they were pretty, yeah, I don't think so, because I think they were pretty specific on where the money was going. Um, this was in result to um, our, our band, our orchestra, and our um, ROTC who went to the grand opening there. Um, and so it was their way of saying thank you for the service that our students performed. Okay. For them. That's what I had. Anybody else have any other questions? No. Okay. We can go to the next one, Buildings, Ground, and Security Report. All right, and the buildings and grounds and security on uh, Thursday night, um, the buildings and grounds and security committee, upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools and the BA, will be presenting the following motions for approval. Um, 
and resolution one is amending board actions on past. Uh, it's basically changing the date of when the Broadway Jersey airs. We'll be using Seoul Middle School. But for the rest of the resolutions, their use of facilities, uh, PTA event, holiday event at school number five, uh, recreation youth soccer training at school 10, uh, Daisy troop meetings at school number nine. For resolution five, it is uh, management specialist Linden Department of Parks and Rec would like to do a rec dance um, at the Linden High School, um, a recital at the Linden High School auditorium. Um, Pamela B. Jones Communities and Cooperation is looking to do novice level ESL parent classes at the high school. Uh, and then intermediate mid-level parent classes and advanced citizenship parent classes at the high school um, on Tuesdays and Thursdays in January through April. Um, the club manager for the Linden Youth Soccer Association is looking at doing um, youth soccer practice at the school nine gym, at the school two gym. And then the PTA at school number nine is looking at running meetings, a family fun night, father-daughter dance, uh, PTA family fun night, uh, read across America, um, a mother-son dance, and a book fair set up um, all at school number nine. Um, for resolution number nine, the Linden Health Department is looking at um, having flu shots for the, L, uh, for the Linden staff at the administrative building, conference room, on December 6th and December 13th. Uh, the sports supervisor for the city of Linden's Park and Recreation Department is looking to have the winter wrestling program at McManus Middle School gymnasium on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And uh, a winter wrestling program at the Tiger Stadium weight room on Mondays and Wednesdays in December, January, February, and March. And finally, the PTA liaison is looking at doing a PTA meeting at school number one on December 15th in the cafeteria. That's it. Thank you, any questions? Well, moving on to the next one, planning and policy. That's me. Thank you. On Thursday evening, I will be presenting to the board um, a first reading for policy 51418, uh, sports-related concussion and head injury. Um, in August of 2023, the New Jersey Department of Education Office of Student Support Services had released a guidance report on prevention, treatment, and education in relation to sports-related head injuries. And so this policy includes revisions to the annual notification to parents on uh, the inclusion of the interscholastic head injury training program that's required. Required. There's also minor um, modifications in the policy in regards to when you can a, a player can return to playing and what that progression looks like for the player. And then there's also references to new forms um, that's necessary for parents and school districts to fill out along with how they are to be used to support this policy to protect students. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, looking for a motion. We're going to continue with this. Uh, and then. Text come in from the public so that you could ask the public to leave if you want. Okay. Okay, copy that. We're going to ask comments from the public at this time. So um, when we go into executive, if you guys want to leave, Bluetooth, we may run late or not, so I don't know. But. Members from the public desiring to make a public comment may come forward at this time. For those watching online, if you wish to make a comment or ask a question, please utilize the raise your hand feature on the online meeting platform. Please begin your comments by stating your name and address. Individuals are invited to speak on one topic at a time, and no individual will speak more than once until all individuals so desiring have spoken once. The public is reminded that to ensure the efficient and orderly operation of the meeting, Members of the public will be limited to speaking on items for three minutes. 
Anyone online? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Hi, this is, hi, it's Donna Hernandez, 133 Princeton Road, Linden. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Um, speaking on the yonder pouches, um, my concern is the um, <coughs> students that wear the Dexcoms um, and they are linked to their phones. And if their sugar, you know, goes up or low, you know, too low, they get notified by their phone. So how is that going to work if their phone is locked in a yonder pouch? Um, you know, parents, you know, may get notified, but by the time they call the office and they find that student, or if they call the nurse and the nurse doesn't answer, then what happens to that student? Thank you. Um, um, to answer your question, um, there is uh, definitely ex um, exceptions with the yonder pouches that relates to students' medical. Um, so there's a case-by-case -case, um, way of how we're handling that. Um, and so we, we have the pouches in the middle schools now. They've been implemented now um, for a few months, and they've been successful. And uh, the students with those medical concerns are going to the nurse or their pouches are different to allow them to um, to to utilize their the equipment needed for their medical support. Thank you. Anything else? Well, my, you know, it, it was brought to my attention by, you know, people who have the Dexcom and by other students that if you're letting students, if they're not being locked up, um, you know, their concern is how is that fair to all the other students who have their phones locked up? You know, I understand it's a medical issue, but how can you have, you know, a few students who may not have their phone locked up and you're telling all the other students they need to have them? That's just what was brought to my attention. So I was going to bring this Thursday, but since it was brought up tonight, I just wanted to mention that. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. And in case the board is wondering, I mean, we make accommodations all the time for students and, and staff, um, you know, based, based on medical issues. In fact, the, the ADA requires us to have meetings to determine what reasonable accommodations are made. So if there is, you know, differential treatment that needs to be provided on the basis of a medical condition, it would not be out of the ordinary, you know, in other, other aspects of school business. I agree with that, yes. You must make accommodations. I agree with that. Copy that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Hernandez. It's so nice to hear you. I missed you tonight. Okay, looking for a motion to go into executive. I'm going to go into executive. Second. Roll call, please. Ms. Pino? Yes. Ms. Rosada Quesada? Yes. Ms. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Cintron? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. And Dr. Bergham? Yes. Ms. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Cintron? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. And Dr. Berghammer? Yes. And motion to adjourn for the night. Second. Yes. Second. Mr. Gabbard. Wait. Uh, roll call, please. Roll call again. Ms. Pino? Yes. Ms. Rosada Quesada? Yes. Ms. Thomas? Yes. Yeah. Ms. Cintron? Yes. Mr. De La Cruz? Yes. Dr. Burgheimer? Yes. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Let's get that. That was good. Motion to come back and motion to go.